in a position uh, that we're not up to scale, as a part of this talking about, uh, and is facing uh, big challenges, budget cuts, everything from research to uh, school lunches, uh, Walmartization of the food economy, uh, barriers to entry for startup farmers, young farmers, especially food entrepreneurs as well. Uh, we have too many public officials now, state level as well as national, who's uh, uh, kind of reflect what George W. Bush, our contribution to the presidency, most recently. Uh, apparently he said, according to uh, the Prime Minister of England, they were in an economic meeting and uh, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, France was speaking uh, about his economic plan and Bush leaned over to Tony and said to him, uh, the problem with the French is they don't have a word for entrepreneur. <laughs> I miss him. I was not his favorite. Well, 
this way. So anyway, they came up with a scheme that uh, two, two pieces of legislation, one, to make my office appointed by the governor rather than elected, and then two, uh, to move the pesticide authority out of uh, the Ag Department. Um, and so they were going to hide this hearing uh, and ram this thing through the legislature. And they called the hearing the first day, had a little hearing room, the schedule agrees. Uh, but they had to move the hearing to the uh, House chamber, the largest room in the Capitol complex, because my leadoff witness was Willie Nelson. <laughs> my second witness was Barbara Jordan. My third witness was the chairwoman of the Dallas Republican Women's Organization. <laughs> Because Republicans don't want their babies eating pesticides either. And so at the end of that, the, the chair of the committee could not even get uh, any member to make the motion to pass uh, either of these two pieces. So we beat them. But, that, that applause is really uh, for you, because that's how we beat them. We beat them by going to the outside. If we'd stayed inside, we would have been crushed. But we went outside and brought the outside in. So that's the way that I think you've got to look at your uh, strategies uh, and tactics. Let's see. Like it or not, you're in politics. I know how. And, and you need to get good at it uh, and aggressive in it. Uh, I know that a lot of people don't like politics. Many of you probably don't like politics. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's run by uh, slip talking soft hands, people like bankers. Uh, it's corrupt. Uh, it's confusing. How can you figure out what the hell is even going on? I think of Butch Hancock, uh, he's a singer songwriter uh, down in Austin, yes, you know, part of the, uh, uh, the flat bankers group, uh, Joey Elliott and Jimmy Dale Gilmore and Butch Hancock. And anyway, Susan and Mark and I had a radio call-in show for a few years, and, and we had Butch on the show once, and uh, was talking to him generally, and he, he and all three of those had grown up out in Lubbock, in the flatland country uh, out there. Uh, but that's also the hardcore religious Christian fundamentalist country. And Bush was explaining how confusing it was as a teenage boy, the hormones racing to be out there, uh, with, in that rigidly repressive, pious uh, church of no, uh, uh, just, uh, just confusing and, and constricting didn't know what to do because he said they told us that sex is the uh, is unclean, it's ungodly, it's the nastiest thing, and you should save it for someone you love. <laughs> well, just as Butch overcame that uh, religious stricture, so can and must we get over the fear and loathing of, of politics, uh, which is really nothing but talking to people, friends, neighbors, strangers, anybody, about what public policy ought to be. You know, Woody Guthrie said, rich folks took your money with politics. You can get it back with politics. That's what I'm saying to you. Is we've got to be involved. And this meeting uh, and the coalition that it represents uh, is uh, just a fundamental to the political revival, revival of and food in our country. It's not going to happen because we want it to happen. It's not going to happen because we're doing good work in, in our own uh, plot of land or in our own market. It's going to happen because we use that positive attitude that people have for it to make policies, local, state, and national, ultimately, that benefit the kind of food economy we want and that we think the American people uh, want. Which brings me back to lesson A. Not only are the American people with you, but millions of them regularly come to you. They come to your CSA, they, they come to your farmers markets, uh, they come to your restaurants, they come to head old schools, they come to food festivals. Very few businesses are in such a privileged position politically to have a whole constituency coming regularly uh, to them. So in addition to serving up good food, serve up good food policies while you're there. Uh, you're, you're in sales, so sell. Uh, have have uh, materials, uh, have conversations. Uh, again, have art, music, have videos, uh, have uh, 
action items, had sign-ups, had things that people can do that advance what you're representing and what they want to have happen as a way of public policy. And everybody knows that public policy does not reflect what it is they want. Certainly not in food, not in much else in our lives these days. So they're ready for this message, and they're ready particularly for action that you might propose. And I suggest you start by being local action. You've got all kinds of issues that you're concerned about. Well, there it is. Uh, I was with Bernie Sanders in Vermont not long ago helping him campaign, and we were in Montpelier, the state capital there, and a guy came up after a presentation wearing a big old button, and it's the best one I've ever seen. It said, wearing a button is not enough. <laughs> you can't be a nation of button wearers. <laughs> we have to do more than that. Uh, and again, you've got that opportunity. Uh, you're, and, and you can use your community respectability, your community uh, support and credibility to keep reaching out to forging more uh, coalitions uh, for this good food public policy uh, that we all advocate. Uh, you know, environmentalists, the climate change uh, people, fracking fighters, they are mostly conservatives, mostly in rural areas, and they, they think the whole world has abandoned them. Uh, where are we? We should be with them, standing with them, and they would come to us because they thought the Republican Party and they thought the corporations were their friends, and now they see quite the opposite. They see whose side they're really on, so they're, they're up for grabs, literally. Uh, and looking for friends. Well, we are their friends. And so we can build those alliances. Some of them are odd by odd bedfellows. I've begun to work with a union, the American Postal Workers Union, uh, which had a rebellion uh, about just over a year ago, uh, and a new leadership came in. And a guy named Mark Demonstein out of North Carolina is now the president of ABWU. Uh, and he wants to forge a national movement, not just of union people, not just of workers, but He's linking up with farm aid and some other folks that I've been getting them together with uh, to do that. Uh, and think about it uh, in terms of you want to organize a network, there's a postal worker in every zip code in America. <laughs> That's a pretty good start <laughs> right there. So we, we've got to be thinking about that. Who could be on our side? Who might naturally be on our side that we're not even talking to, that we're not uh, reaching uh, out uh, to? As Jesse Jackson put it once, we might not all have come over on the same boat, but we're in the same boat now. That's a powerful political reality. We've got to put it to work. Uh, so when you go to see uh, a, a city council member, you go to see a state legislator or a congress creditor, uh, you go to see uh, uh, the uh, editorial board, uh, you go to see a land grant college dean, uh, don't go alone. Bring some of these other people with you and say, we're, here's the coalition. You're just not talking about uh, a few dirt farmers out here. We, we represent something big uh, that all of these people want. And we're looking to you to begin to stand with us. And us is the big us in this fight. And then, finally, in this outreach, uh, go tell your story by literally telling your stories. Not just your load of nutrition facts and your economic statistics, uh, but the full tale, personal tales, of why you're in this. What are the big values that, that move you to even come visit old so-and-so? Uh, and put that to, to work. Uh, your real-life narratives, uh, your big vision, community, most importantly, your ideals uh, and values. You know, it's, it's cultural connection that changes politics. Not politics doesn't change culture. Culture changes politics. And you've got the culture. And you can go to people with that. Van Jones, one of the great young uh, African-American leaders in our country, uh, we were together in a meeting not long ago, and he had, uh, he, he was kind of lecturing a bunch of liberals, and he's kind of lecturing them on, uh, well, you, you know, you, you spend too much, you, you meet an individual and you just dump your whole statistical load on them right there. You, know, you, you need to, tell stories, and he pointed out that Martin Luther King Jr. in 1963 at the Lincoln Memorial did not say, I have a position paper. <laughs> he had that dream, and he painted that dream, that rallied people and inspired people to be bigger than they otherwise would have been. 
So use your stories, your personal stories, and put them on social media as well. I've got a friend, uh, she's on our board with the High Tower Lowdown, and she's a social media guru, just done tre tremendous uh, work, uh, young, she lives up in Brooklyn. And, uh, and she, when the uh, uh, Coleman Foundation, Pink Ribbon people, uh, took away the money for Planned Parenthood, uh, there was, of course, women erupted all across the country. And, uh, and there were these campaigns to send money to Planned Parenthood. Well, a lot of people did. But she thought, well, what about the people who don't have money to send to Planned Parenthood? So she put up uh, a social media page uh, that said, Planned Parenthood saved my life. And they got more than a million stories came in. And that changed me. And then they're reading, of course, we didn't know that's what Planned Parenthood would do. So you, you, you can't just say, well, Planned Parenthood does more than abortion. It does this and this and this and this. But these were people saying, here's what it did for me. And that's a, those are the same kind of stories that you have. Those stories uh, will change uh, ag policy. I refer to you here at the top as agitators. You know, the powers of being try to make that a pejorative. All of those agitators, those poor people didn't mind living up against that toxic waste dump until the environmentalists came in here. And they, those workers, they, they were perfectly happy making that low wage until those union agitators came in. Well, of course, I, that is not uh, what agitation represents at all. Ag agitation is the essence of America. Again, rebellion. We're not for agitators. We'd be wearing white powdered wigs singing God Hail the Queen here this morning. Agitation built America, and I don't mean just the, the, the founding fathers. Uh, in fact, at the first presidential election that chose George Washington, less than 4% of the people were even eligible to vote. You couldn't vote if you were a woman, you couldn't vote if you're Native American, African American. You couldn't vote if you did not, if you were not of European descent and owned land, you were not allowed to vote. So it's not the founding documents, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, uh, that we celebrate. Rather, it's the people, ordinary folks like you, who fought, uh, bled, and died in the innovating decades to democratize those documents, to extend that possibility to more and more people. Again, that wasn't done by great leaders. It was done by working stiffs, dirt farmers, just regular people who yearned for not just freedom, but yearn for a community, something bigger than themselves, that they can be involved in. They yearn for the chance to build this country. And we don't do that. Instead, we say, well, corporations will build the country. You just be good, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Remember George W. after the uh, uh, September 11th attack? Said the American people should go shopping. There, there's bold leadership, isn't it? <laughs> to action. Well, so it's been those intervening agitators of Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass and the, the, the uh, uh, suffrage movement. Uh, by the way, those, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and the three women who led that from the 1942 Seneca Falls first meeting and led the suffrage movement, none of them ever lived to vote. It took 70 years from that meeting to the passage of the amendment allowing women to vote. It's a hard, long struggle. But we've got to pers persevere, as, as Willie Nelson told me once, uh, high tower, the early bird might get the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. <laughs> I always have to let that lay out there a little bit. <laughs> I won't explain it to the slower one next to you. <laughs> uh, but it is this agitation that has built the country this movement beginning right after the Civil War uh, through about 1890, um, 1895 or so. Uh, then the progressive movement that came after that, the labor movement, uh, the uh, civil rights movement, uh, the women's movement, the environmental movement. All of these have been just ordinary folks. Rebellion is America. It's going on every day in every zip code in this country. Those people fighting fracking, they're rebelling against the system. Those people who are taking on GMOs, you're rebelling against a corporate order. Those people who dare to form their own parties or at least locally uh, form their own independent progressive action uh, efforts, they're rebelling 
I guess, a two-party dichotomy that runs over the vast majority of Americans. All of these are rebellions, and you are a fundamental part of that rebellion and connected to the original farm rebellion uh, that led to America itself. So when they call you an agitator, you can say to them, yeah, that is the center post in the washing machine that gets the dirt out. <laughs> so, <laughs> Those of you uh, in this emerging uh, sustainable movement uh, are blazing a path to a, a brighter, little d democratic future, a grassroots future enterprise, community, uh, and little d democratic possibilities. Uh, your groups become important, uh, as Mark was saying. Uh, and, and you need to think, I hope you would think about ways in your workshops that you can make this a more permanent effort, a more organized effort. 